India, or as we once called it, Britain's spice rack. <laughs> this week, India's Prime Minister, Narendra Modi, made his first official visit to the UK, the highlight of which was a speech at Wembley Stadium, featuring fireworks, um, the Prime Minister, a spectacular drum battle, and a rousing speech. I was told that London would be cold. <laughs> but not this much. OK, 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 that, yes, fair play. That was clearly a joke, but it does also follow in the grand tradition of the UK underselling the severity of the conditions an Indian leader would be suffering under. <laughs> but, but for all the spectacle, this trip had a little tension behind it. As you probably know, India used to be a British colony, and our behaviour was so bad that in recent years, many in India have called for colonial reparations, with one particular demand recently gaining attention. This is the Kohinoor diamond, which reached Britain during the reign of the British Empire and became the magnificence of the Queen's crown. A lobby of Indian industrialists and artists in London are preparing to give legal challenge to Queen Elizabeth for Kohinoor's return to India. Yes, some in India are demanding the, re the return of the fabled Kohinoor diamond, which was removed from India and presented to Queen Victoria in 1850 before being embedded in this elegant head sofa. But, but the British government is refusing to give that diamond up for reasons that former Deputy Prime Minister Nick Clegg explained last year. There is no doubt in, in our mind that the diamond was relocated to this country under legal conditions, which are not in any doubt. But there is, I think, clarity in the sincerity with which the Queen holds the crown jewels, all of them, in trust on behalf of the nation, has done for many generations, and future monarchs will continue to do so. OK, OK. That's, that, that's an intricate legal argument, so let me see if I can break it down for you. What he's basically saying is, I understand that you want the diamond, but the thing is, we have the diamond, <laughs> you don't, and we're going to keep having it forever. So, in summary, finders keepers, go fuck yourself, cheerio. <laughs> and as for, as for the current Prime Minister, David Cameron, when he was asked about returning the diamond during a visit to India a few years ago, he simply stated, they're not having that back. <laughs> Which is so petulant and childish a response. I'm surprised he didn't lick the diamond to call <laughs> official dibs on it. And look, in a way, you can understand why Britain does not want to give that diamond back. All our greatest possessions are stolen. <laughs> Tea, stolen. Uh, the Elgin marbles, let's say permanently borrowed. <laughs> The entire British Museum is basically an active crime scene. And <laughs> if we start giving back everything we took from the Empire, that building will basically be completely empty, except for one portrait of Lord Alfred Tennyson and a pair of Gary Oldman's old running shorts. And that can't happen. <laughs>